What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over anchoring and scaling of our widgets and different screens like this. And the reason we're going over this is because essentially I've gotten to a point in the fighting game tutorial where I can start using this, and I should have started using it before, but for me functionality comes first when you're trying to learn, so you don't want to necessarily be focusing on how neat something looks the first time you go through and then fall behind because you're worrying about that too much. So we're going to go through and I'm just going to show you some uses for anchors and scale boxes, kind of what they do and what they can provide for your game and how we can use them going forward. Now you don't need to know anything about my fighter template tutorial series to watch this episode and have it make sense. I'm just going to be doing it in there so I can get some work done in that and also show you kind of how it can look and how it can change your game. However, if you would like to check out the series, I'll leave a link in the iCard in the top right corner right here to bring you to the first episode of that series. We're up to episode 50 now, believe it or not. So for almost a year, we did one every Sunday, almost a year we've been working on that. But okay, anyway, guys, let's take a look at our press any key screen. So we're sitting here and nothing's going on, right? But if the user was to say, and it's a little bit tough because I just got to grab the edge of the screen, move this. Now you can see the text up top, the Unreal Engine 4 fighting game template is trying to stay in the middle, trying to stay where it's anchored actually. But the press any key screen or any key text is actually just kind of sitting there. It's not moving. So that text is not anchored and the text up top is anchored. Um, so essentially what's going on here is this is trying to stay in its position that I gave it, this top text, and this uh, text down at the bottom is trying to stay in its absolute position where I placed it on the widget. So obviously those are two very different things. Also the scaling doesn't quite work. You see, first of all, it actually stays uniform the whole time until it's getting cropped and then it zooms in really quickly and does not even accomplish what it's trying to accomplish. So there's a lot of things we can make better here. Now, to be completely fair, your user probably isn't going to be sitting here resizing the screen all that much, but you can't really assume that they're not gonna be doing that unless you uh, force it to where the window cannot be manually resized, then you pretty much have to account for that. Regardless, if you don't want to account for that and you just say, no, I'll just have specific windows, that's also fine, but we do need to know how to scale them to specific values. Um, so if you have specific resolutions that the user can pick, we still have to know how to do that. So this will help us cover that as well. Okay, so we'll fix this screen up. Let's do that before we get into anything else. I do have a HUD, so it's in, in the game, so you can kind of see what it looks like while the game is running. But let's focus on this menu for a second. So let's go back to our widget. I call mine the press any key screen. And if for some reason you wanna try this on a new widget, then one you don't have, that's perfectly fine. Just go to add new, user interface, widget blueprint. And then that's what I'm working in now. I just have the background image, the text that you see up here, and this text that's in a animation down at the bottom, which is currently invisible. And you can see it right there. So those are the only things I have in here. Of course, the default panel, canvas panel, and what I've done is I have clicked on my text and I've selected an anchor that I want. So we, we talk about this a lot throughout the series, but I never actually show what it's used for or even actually use it in the series. But these anchors essentially provide a way to change the widget's origin. And I don't mean the widget in terms of like this widget blueprint that we're in. These, <laughs> per Unreal Engine's documentation, all of these are also called widgets. So this is a widget, this whole press any key screen, but these texts and this image are also widgets according to them. So let's, um, let's use a different term. Let's just call it the text. So this text, its origin essentially gets moved to where we anchor a position to. And that means it'll actually try and stay there as the screen size changes. It'll try and keep its size as the resolution is changing, as the the width or the height of the window that it's playing in is changing. So it is going to affect a few things by adding this anchor, but it is going to try and keep its relative position to the screen size, which is really important. Whereas you saw that the press any key actually just tried to stay in place. So 
let's go ahead and show you what I did. The top text, I actually just anchored to the top. Now, to be completely fair, it doesn't really matter where you anchor it. Uh, you just want to anchor it to the closest spot that you can to where it's going to go. I know this is going to be top and I want it to be centered as much as possible. So I tried to put it in the top center. But you could anchor it wherever really and it would still work. It's just that you want to anchor it to somewhere. If you anchor it to somewhere here, then you'll be able to, it'll be able to keep with the screen size and hopefully actually stay in the correct position. So I anchored mine top center and it's going to give you these values and you may have to change them again. Usually Unreal will uh, put in the right spot for you when you choose that anchor, but if for whatever reason it doesn't, let me show you what it looks like now. So if I put zero, zero, you can see that the origin of this text box is now in the top center because that's the anchor that it's on. Or whoops, it's on this one. So you can see the top center of the text box, or excuse me, the top left of the text box is in the top center of the screen. That's what the anchor is doing. So now zero, zero is not the top left. We've completely changed that. And I forget what my values are, so I'm just going to undo. And honestly, this could come over a little bit. Whoops, that's the wrong way. Let's do that. So there you go. That's what that anchor is essentially doing. It's moving the origin to a different part of the screen, to the top center. And the text is trying to stay in the top center as the resolution and screen size change. So it's a very simple thing. You don't even have to adjust these things most of the time. Um, although you can open up the anchors and play around with some other stuff. They essentially change where the anchors are, where their locations are, the minimum and the maximum. For most things, you won't need this. I'll let you read this. Well, actually, this doesn't really help too much. But essentially, it just moves the top left and the right bottom apart from each other. So you can get a different feeling uh, if you need more complex things. For most of your text and images, I don't seem to need it or use it. Okay, and then let's look at press any key. So press any key wasn't anchored. If it was, you'd see a little yellow arrow like you see here. These are all things that have changed from the default values. You can always hit the little yellow arrow to go back to the default. I have not anchored this any key text. So if I anchor it, well, it's closest to bottom middle, I would say. So let's click bottom middle in the anchor. And again, I may want to change some of these values. However, Unreal kept the values at the accurate ones that I would want. However, if I were to put these at zero, zero, then the top left is going to be at the bottom middle. So it's going to be off the screen, not what we want. So of course we can apply an offset here to wherever we want to put it, which I believe I had negative 220 and negative 220. It's pretty funny because that was not on purpose. And now when I play this, you'll actually be able to see that if I could get my mouse without clicking, oops. So as soon as I press the key, it goes to the main menu. All right, so now you'll see that if I move my window again, the press any key is also coming with the text. Okay, and this also goes for up and down. The only th problem is that the text gets cropped basically right away because it moves together and zooms it in. And for this, the whole reason you see the zoom in is because we need something called a scale box. Because as soon as it starts getting cropped, it's going to zoom in and try and put it in the center and it's just going to look terrible. But what we can do is have it actually scale with the screen as well. Sure, we want to keep it in the center, but if we have a really small screen, we don't necessarily want the text to be this big. Say you're playing this on a phone, which you know we probably won't be able to do that. But say that you could, or say that you have a game that could be played on the phone, or a tablet, or just a really small monitor. I mean, that's the thing. It doesn't even have to be a different device. If you just have a really small viewing device, a really small monitor, or a really big monitor, it has to be able to scale to these different values. So let's go ahead and, and you can either uh, add a scale box by typing it in, in the palette section here, and then move the canvas, canvas panel into it, or you can actually right click on the canvas panel and hit wrap with, and you can choose all these different things. There's actually one that's off the screen too, it's called a wrap box. We want a scale box. The scale box is essentially, it, you can change values here, which will tell you how to stretch it and uh, certain sizes that you might want to use. But I like to just honestly wrap it with the scale box and then hit scale to fit. That's the default value. 
And what it will do is if we play it now, then I can actually go in here. I could grab it again. And the text and both the text will actually scale with the window as well as the background image. So it does leave some black space here. Like you can see all this up top. Um, since we're viewing it in the standard Unreal window and the aspect ratio is off. But you can see that it does keep its size as the window changes, which is really useful. So there you go. You can have a nice resizing widget. Now, it does give you this little bit of issue where you have this kind of, you can see the background as you're making it bigger. The ways that I usually see to fix that or to just make this a little bit bigger um, than the scale box, like have something outside of the scale box that's a little bit larger to kind of fill in the gaps. So maybe just a black image or something in the background to kind of cover that up. I haven't done that here because, well, quite frankly, I want to show that this was an issue. I think it's easier to kind of show you that you see the blue. Um, although I'm not going to worry about that today because honestly, Unreal does a great job of, of fixing it on the spot. Like as soon as you release, then it does fix it. It's literally just while you're dragging and then while you're at a weird aspect ratio or screen size that it doesn't quite understand while you're dragging. Okay. So that's good. Um, that's our main menu. Now let's go from our main menu to our games HUD. I'll show you some things as well. Okay, so I'm gonna use my mouse here because I actually find it easier for these buttons, even though I have the key pressed. So here's our, our fight. And we have our character HUD. Now, if you're a long time viewer of the fighting game series, you'll see that there's been some things added, such as the round timer, the images, and the names. That's coming out very soon. It's actually coming out two days after this episode. So if you haven't already seen it, I'll leave a link in my card right here if you wanna check that out when that becomes available. But that's not important for today. I just kind of want to add more stuff on the screen so you guys can see how useful this is. So I actually want to do that one first, which I don't normally do. But Okay, so you can see I have all these things on the screen. And I can live my best life, attack this guy. Everything's working well, all right? Let's resize the screen. Now, if we go bigger, I don't have this in a scale box, all right? So just like last time. You see, if I go bigger, it leaves these black lines on the side. That's actually normal because of the fact that uh, we don't have any scaling being done uh, in the actual world. So it's just kind of moving the, the view that the camera sees to the center. However, the you can see that my HUD is being spaced farther apart to fit in their spots. They are anchored, so that makes sense. It makes sense why everything would be moving uh, in the correct spots, however, since nothing is being scaled, as soon as it starts getting cropped, then it all tries to scale up to fit, and it just looks bad. So if we were to unanchor, allow me to go to my, if I could go to the right thing, allow me to go to my HUD. Let's say I were to unanchor this, just, just again, just to show you. And I'm going to do a quick little speed run hack here to skip my main menu and go straight to my character select. Okay. So I've unanchored my player two character image. And now if I go to resize the screen, you can see that it just instantly gets cropped basically because he doesn't have any sort of anchoring. So he's trying to stay in his absolute position in the world, which is no longer available no longer on a screen of this size. So this is why anchors are really important. I'm gonna put them in the top right just because that's the most logical in my opinion. But as long as you anchor him, he'll be good to go. Now there is one, one problem. So we're gonna put this in a scale box and it'll work, but the issue is it's going to change the size of our screen because we have some things here that it doesn't quite like Allow me to show you. So we got our canvas panel. I can go ahead and wrap with scale box. And it kind of pushes things off a bit. So it's not necessarily their values that are in the wrong spot. Like I can try and get this, whoops. 
I can try and get this in a value in a location that's pretty good. And that's all well and good, right? Say I, I move these around. There you go. You're like, oh, that pretty much resembles the screen. But here's the problem. This is the scale box, and this is the canvas panel. And it's simply because the the height of this is too big. So, like, the, the things that I have in here, to be able to scale it properly, the height is too big. I have these long input stacks which go off the canvas, and I have things at the top and the bottom of the screen. So we can't uniformly scale them and keep everything on. So if we jump into the fight here, and yes, I need to build reflection captures. You can see everything's not quite in the right spot. Um, it's a little bit off the screen, or, or like it's not at the edges of the screen. The progress bars are too close together. If I were to move this, it would scale. So you can see as they get to their spot where they're supposed to be, like the character profile images are at the corners of the screen, then they do start scaling. Whoops. They do start scaling and going down. So it does make it, you know, it's very playable. I can play on this mini, mini game. <clears throat> but that's not really what we want. Um, we don't want it to necessarily look like that. I've repositioned everything back to its default values because I wanted these texts back in the proper spot. But say you want to get rid of your scale box because this happened. You can go ahead and just close your canvas panel. You don't have to, but it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like everything is encompassed. Copy it. Delete your scale box. It'll, it will delete your canvas panel, but then you can just paste it on your... Uh, root element there and everything will be back to the way it was so don't be afraid to add a scale box it's very easy to fix um, but if we want to fix that issue that you're seeing where things are too big so what we can do to solve this issue is actually add something called a size box i've gone ahead and done it because i had to change some of my uh, positions on my text to make it look right so all you have to do to actually add this is feel free to either Right click on your canvas panel or do the same stuff we were doing before with the uh, search for size box in your palette, drag it in, move everything into it. Much easier to just click on your canvas panel, uh, right click and then type wrap with or click wrap with and wrap with size box. Now the size box, what it does is it attempts to keep different sizes that you actually give it, which is useful because, well, if you want to keep a certain size instead of you know, using what the default scale box will give you because it thinks some things are too big or too long, then you're gonna wanna tell the game that and tell the widget that. So, once you have your size box in here, you have a few different things you can do. Uh, you have in your child layout section, you can do width and height override, which essentially just set the desired width and height and as long as that can be met, it will automatically do it. And then you can also set minimums and maximums so it won't go below these values. I'm just gonna set the minimum. To be honest, I'm not sure if it's more efficient or anything to do it one way or, or the other, but to me it makes more sense to do the min, the min desired width and min desired height because I don't care about a maximum per se, at least not yet. I just wanna make sure that everything can fit onto the screen. Um, you probably would wanna do a maximum uh, <laughs> just in case it gets too big and the health bars get too far spread apart or something. But to be honest, I don't think it's that important. I don't think it would really break the game. It might look a little weird and that's why you'd put a maximum. But usually the one I'm worried about is the minimum. So go ahead and put your size box in. Go ahead and put your desired sizes in. If you're not sure, but you wanna use the whole uh, size of the canvas. It's always in your bottom left here. You can see this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. It's 1600 by 900 units here. So you go 1600 by 900 in the width and height. Then it'll become this size. So just to show you, this is what it looked like before. And then when I add the min desired width and height, then it becomes like this. So then when we go to play that, just again, skip this. Okay, so now you can see everything's in the right spot, but when I go to resize it, everything comes with it. Nothing's off the screen. The text is in the right spot. I can resize it up and down because I have both the desired height and width. 
and it will the scale box will scale it and the size box will say hey no we need to keep this size so I could play on this tiny little player if I wanted so there you go guys that's how you can basically completely alter uh, how your game is played on different devices and different sizes with different aspect ratios but if you have any specific questions or if you're trying to use this and you would you want me to tell you how to make it fit I can help you with that. Um, I can go over specific examples and what I would do. So feel free to reach out to me. You can, uh, the easiest way to reach out to me and I'll respond the quickest probably is on Discord. So there's a Discord link in the description. I can't add it to the iCard because YouTube does not like that. But feel free to send me a message on there or join the community and post in the game dev chat channel. And I'll be happy to get you set up. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. This is how you can uh, do anchoring and scaling of your screens in the fighting game tutorial or in any project you have. And if this helped you with what you were looking for, please subscribe. It does more for the channel than literally anything else, and I really appreciate it. Also, if you're interested, feel free to check over the YouTube membership and Patreon benefits from supporting the channel. So I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to the current YouTube membership supporters and the Patreon supporters. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very, very much for supporting the channel. And thank you very much for continuing to help me and believe in me and my videos. If you want to join, again, details are right here in the description and also in this link. Lastly guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash seanthebro27, we play Demon Souls. Uh, you know, we play Dark Souls games on Wednesday, but it feels like just Demon Souls after the last few weeks. It's been, uh, been one heck of a ride, I will tell you that. And I'm actually going to be starting a new series on Friday with my friend Dave. We're actually going to be starting the uh, Dark Pictures Anthology, I believe it's called. Feel free to come check us out. If you're watching this video a little bit after it was put out, then we probably already streamed it. However, feel free to still go check it out. And that's it. That's just for fun. But that's the video, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped you. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of your hair now. So thank you so much again for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, my friends.